To introduce this afternoon's, this afternoon's film, Neil Blomkamp's Chappie, which is one of my personal favorites from that year, it is a pleasure to indite, invite Dr. Sean Rafferty. Dr. Rafferty is a professor in the Department of Anthropology, where he teaches archaeology and critical thinking skills. His research involves the archaeology of Eastern North, North America, with particular interest in the interplay between ritual practices and cultural variability, especially within the area of mortuary practices and smoking rituals. So he's really, really fun at parties. <laughs> His lifelong interest in speculative fiction is what brings him here tonight to introduce the film and lead us through the post-screening discussion. Dr. Rafferty. Okay, thank you and, and, and welcome. Um, that's one of my best, one of my, one of my favorite slips of the tongue, whether you're in, indicting me or, or, or inviting me and you corrected it, but then you proceeded to indict me a little bit, which is, which is, which is great. Um, usually I'm pretty comfortable on a podium, but, but now I, I find myself overwhelmed by anxiety, uh, which, which I'll try. So thanks for that. I appreciate that. No. Um, so I, I, I'm, Sorry that I couldn't attend most of the other um, or any of the other discussions that we've had uh, so far because a lot of uh, a lot of really fascinating topics are um, are coming up. Uh, I had only seen all I saw of uh, when I came in early to watch like the, the last fifteen minutes of her was all that I've ever actually seen of the um, of the film and and yet even that little bit brought some pretty um, some pretty deep topics to uh, uh, to mind. Um, what we're really talking about when we deal with discussions of AI is, I think, two things, um, and we often kind of conflate those uh, into one. And one of them is the idea of creating incredibly sophisticated tools, emphasis on the tools, for uh, for, for essentially processing huge amounts of uh, huge amounts of data. Uh, and to what degree we can make those tools actually operative in the physical world that we exist in. And that's when we start getting into the idea of the intersection between AI and robotics, which is where Chappie uh, comes in, as well as a lot of the films of, uh, of Neil Blomkamp. What I also find interesting and what I think often gets maybe a little bit left behind in the discussions about AI is we miss the point that we're also talking about the possibility of what I at least call artificial consciousness, which is somewhat different from the idea of artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence are, again, highly sophisticated tools for controlling information. Artificial consciousness is what you have when those tools get so sophisticated that they potentially become self-aware and self-deterministic. And that's what we see at the end of, of her. Now, in the fictional discussions of these, where I mean, fiction is, is very often projecting our own fears and our own concerns onto some kind of an imagined uh, alternative uh, reality. And that's where Neil Blomkamp's films uh, are particularly salient. Uh, he's best known for, well, obviously Chappie, uh, but he uh, came to prominence, I believe, with the film District 9, uh, went on to um, direct uh, Elysium. He actually is writer and co-director, sorry, uh, co-writer and director of, of, uh, of these films. And now, and now Chappie, there's also a film Demonic, which has got more of a, a, uh, a supernatural element, but also with a lot of kind of technological uh, uh, elements as well. I think he also did, um, and some, you can help me out, Ray, whether, whether he did uh, Hardcore Henry, was that a Blancom film? Or was that just because, whenever I see Charlotte Copley in a film, I assume that that uh, that Blomkamp's directing it, but, uh, but, I, but I, I'm not sure. It doesn't matter. Um, the point being is that the themes of um, of blown comps of, of a lot of his films are more the idea of AI as a tool uh, and tools particularly of what I will call sort of a techno fascist dystopia. Uh, what happens when a essentially a police state is often able to use uh, artificial intelligence as a tool of oppression of their populace? Uh, you see that. Um, in uh, in District Nine, with the way that the uh, the government is able to oppress 
uh, their, their new minority uh, group, the prawns, the extraterrestrial uh, refugees. Uh, you see it particularly with Elysium uh, or Elysium uh, with the idea, you know, there, there you have, you know, robots beating up on, on Matt Damon, uh, who is just, you know, a working slob trying to get to work and ultimately having to uh, fight against the oppressive regime just in order to uh, have the, the ability to continue uh, living uh, and breathing. And with Chappie, again, I don't want to like give, give too much away if people haven't, uh, haven't seen it. But a, a big part of the um, of the tension in Chappie is uh, whether this one um, a, a tool, essentially a robotic tool of state oppression, uh, which is one of legion of similar tools of robotic law enforcement uh, uh, power, is then able to uh, acquire personhood, and by using then the power of his artificial intelligence and his physical prowess as being, you know, a superhuman robot, he then uses those to kind of Robin Hood his way into helping his new human, uh, his new human friends. What I call kind of a um, uh, the idea of the the murder bot with the heart of gold uh, kind of uh, kind of trope, and that's a reference, by the way, to the books of Martha Wells. If you haven't read the Murder Bot Diaries, I strongly I strongly recommend them. But this is a theme that you see really almost as far back: the idea of the created being that acquires its own agency and then uses that agency in various ways to interact with humans. I mean, that goes back to Frankenstein, right? The birth of speculative fiction as well. Not a robot because that concept didn't exist, but think of it as kind of, you know, a meat robot that was then created out of, out of, out of spare parts. But you can go on and, and look at, at this theme popping up over uh, over and over again. Um, you know, the, uh, the origins of cinema with... Um, uh, with Metropolis, uh, Robbie the Robot from Forbidden Planet from '56, uh, a, a lesser uh, a, a lesser known, but I still think one of one of my personal favorites, uh, Tobor the Great from 1954. If you haven't seen that, Tobor, robot spelled backwards, you know, um, uh, he he also is a, you know a, a you know essentially a tool of of the state that you know befriends a little boy and has to go fight the bad guys. Um, and then later works like, you know, Short Circuit from 1986, um, or even The Iron Giant or uh, Terminator 2 Judgment Day, the idea of these robots that were built as weapons that become conscious and are able to essentially reprogram themselves in order to do good as opposed to, uh, as opposed to, uh, as opposed to doing, doing harm. So, um, that's kind of what we got going on uh, with Chappie. It is, I, I don't want to call it lighter fare. It's, it's definitely a tonal shift from what little I could tell from, from her. Her seemed pretty heavy. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of blown comps, other films, District 9, Elysium also were tonally fairly, um, fairly dense and fairly, fairly heavy films. Chappie is uh, a little lighter, a little more played, uh, a little more played for laughs. Uh, but it, it also has some very uh, some very deep themes, particularly uh, the very last scene of the film, uh, actually, uh, which doesn't feature Chappie at all, uh, is is presenting uh, really a completely changed future from what you're seeing in the rest of the film, and and a, a lot more of. You know, I watch Chappie and I enjoy the film, but I'm also thinking, well, what's next? Like, what comes after? Uh, you know, uh, the film is over. So I will stop talking because I'll keep going all night if you let me. Uh, but I look forward to hearing what you have to hear about uh, what you have to say about Chappie. <laughs>